Martin Hellman, great to meet you, and I appreciate the time for you to talk to all Israel News, and I'm honored to be here in Tallinn for my first trip to Estonia. Thank you for having me. I'm hoping you are enjoying our country. I am, though we are here at a very difficult moment. Um, I'm here to speak at the Jerusalem Prayer Breakfast to mobilize Christians to pray for Estonia and the Baltics, uh, pray for peace and security in Ukraine, and of course, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. As an evangelical, it's uh, very, very important to me. So it, it uh, comes at an interesting moment for uh, the threats that you all are facing right now. Uh, I want to talk to you about your positions on Israel and the Middle East. But first, talk to me for a moment about the threats coming from Moscow and how you see them. Well, this is something that we, we're sort of used to living on, the, the threat, or uh, everlasting threat. I mean, over the one past 1,000 years, mm -hmm. we almost for every 100 years, every 100, 100 years, Russians have attacked us. So this is a part of our history, knowing that we will never have real peace and we will always have to be prepared to defend ourselves. And of course, nowadays, uh, one way to be, be, be more secure is uh, we be, being part of NATO. But what people tend to forget when we talk about NATO is that every country has its own obligations to, to have a working defense as well. It, 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 is, it is impossible to have a, a defense alliance where only you know, one or a few countries have defense forces. Right. And, uh, and uh, we, uh, especially uh, in light of what's going on in Ukraine or in light of what's happened in, in Georgia, for instance, mm -hmm. We need to beef up our own security uh, and our own weapons systems as well. Uh, when it comes to the current situation with Ukraine, uh, we do believe that the uh, the situation, in a sense, is is really depressing. Uh, the Russians are the only ones who have weapons to back up their demands. Uh, everyone else is, especially the Western European countries, are talking about. How, how we need to preserve peace. And that has um, a worrying echo of, of Munich mentality, mm -hmm. 1938 mentality that we, or if you go to the example of Israel, trading peace for land or land for peace, mm -hmm. that somehow if we satisfy the Russians' demands to a degree, then they won't attack Ukraine. I think it is a wrong mindset. Uh, having lived uh, next to Russia, having lived next to Russians in Estonia, um, I can say with certainty that Russians only respect force. And if you do not show strength, you will not have peace. That is a, a fool's hope. So I don't see anyone other than Ukrainians preparing to defend themselves. Uh, which basically tells me that Russians will decide whether they want or don't want a war in Ukraine. And, uh, and if, if they get their um, goals, if they achieve they, their they goals, do. Russians, the Russians. if Russians achieve their uh, objectives without the war, uh, there will be no war. But that doesn't mean that the West or Ukrainians haven't lost. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is that is a, one of the uh, one of the sad uh, uh, truths of the situation. The other one is that Putin has said it quite clearly that the biggest geopolitical tragedy of the twentieth century was the collapse of the Soviet Union. So he's as, a, as somebody whose family escaped out of Russia, I, I thought that was one of the good things <laughs> of the twentieth century. <laughs> so did we. So did we. Yeah. And you were liberated. We, we we got our independence back because of the collapse. But if you look at the, mm, the 20 year uh, rule of Putin, he has systematically tried to undone that. With, he has now, after the events in Kazakhstan, he basically now has whole Central Asia locked mm -hmm. under his grip. Uh, after the war in Georgia, he has Caucasus, or war in Chechnya as well, he has Caucasus under his grip. He, he, he has basically, after the uh, uh, the uh, uh, events in uh, Belarus a, a year ago, or not more than a year ago, in August 2020, when there was uh, 
presidential elections, which uh, of course weren't legal or honest, and and uh, he played everyone. So after these events, he now has control over Belarus and more and thirty thousand troops, on the ground. which is which is the result of that, which is the result of that, and uh, so he's effectively taken it over without anybody really saying anything. Exactly, and what he's still. Uh, what he still hasn't taken back or, or gathered from the lost bunch is Ukraine and Baltic countries. So if he's done with Ukraine, he'll come after the Baltic countries. That's as clear as day to us. So, uh, but you're an Article Five NATO country. I think one of the uh, one of the main objectives of put, uh, of Putin in Ukraine is to show to the world that actually NATO doesn't function as everyone expects it to function and if he and I, we don't know what provocation he'll use to make that point but if he if he effectively makes that point then the uh, then the uh, unsaid uh, understanding everywhere in Moscow in Beijing in, in Western European capitals in Washington is that actually the eastern flank of NATO is undefendable and is effectively again under Russian sphere of influence. So just to be clear, even though Ukraine is not a NATO country, you I think you're I think I think what I'm hearing is that you're saying it's a test for NATO. Exactly. Yes. And while each of the Baltic states are uh, NATO countries as Poland and others, but Article 5 is not enough to rest on that, that you can trust everybody is going to come to your defense if there's a, if there's a crisis. You want that, you need that, but Article 4 is the part about you, you need to be strong enough yourselves to yeah, well, not get rolled over. Ex exactly. I think, I mean, I mean, am I what, hearing that correctly? Yeah, yeah, you are hearing that correctly. What is, what, is, um, what is being played out in Ukraine right now is the strategic security architecture uh, of our time is being challenged mm -hmm. and if that is successfully challenged then nothing that we have taken for granted no longer can be taken for granted so every country in the eastern flank of NATO needs to beef up their own security in order for the NATO to actually work. I am extremely critical of the uh, separate diplomacy of France mm -hmm. what, what President Macron has done he has flown to Moscow over the heads of the Ukrainians, has promised the Russians that the Ukrainians will change their constitution to please the Russians in order to show himself as a peacemaker. So he is basically giving away Ukrainian sovereignty and territory to Russians uh, in order to uh, be able to say uh, before the presidential elections in France that he has been you know, a peacemaker. Now that is, first of all, it's, 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 it, it's, it's not the way to do diplomacy, although French tend to do that, and, uh, but, uh, but of course that's not the way to stop Russian aggression, or that's not the way to stop Russian uh, planners either. So you're, that, I'm guessing from what you're, I'm hearing you say, you're more of a, a, a Churchill guy than a Chamberlain guy? <laughs> that would be true, <laughs> that would be true. Okay. All right, let me, so, 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 yeah, you, your father was the interior minister. You were recently a finance minister uh, here at the Estonian government, previous government. Um, your party is uh, large and growing stronger um, by all accounts. Top of the polls at the moment. Top of the polls at the moment. So, um, and, and the current government, uh, the prime minister, their party is, is, is slipping significantly. So, it's not inconceivable that uh, this government is going to either collapse or in March of next year there will be new elections. Regardless of the scenario, um, you and your party are currently well positioned either to be part of a governing coalition or potentially to lead one. So uh, as the editor-in-chief of all Israel news and all Arab news, I'm particularly curious on your view on Israel. Like, you know, if you have the influence as a, as a prime minister or as a major figure in a, in a future government, what should people know? What should Christians know? What should Jews know? What should Muslims know about your view of Israel? Right, yeah. Like, 
uh, all, all true. We, we are trying to get to the government and trying to do that by maximizing our vote and, and therefore maximizing our leverage. Um, what people uh, need to understand is that we are a, uh, a patriotic or nationalist uh, uh, party, which in, in Eastern Europe at least is not a bad thing. Mm. Uh, nationalism in Western Europe has a bad ring to it, not in here. Uh, so we are unashamed of the... Uh, You're attacked by every liberal, uh, progressive uh, media outlet my, I've ever seen. Yeah, my point exactly. Bitter, but, but, I mean, like, yeah, exactly. Honest, right? uh, added to that, we are also conservatives. Okay. We are conservatives in a, in a very traditional Christian way, which I think is, is something that would, uh, would resonate with, with Christians everywhere. We, one, of the, one of the main thrusts into politics for our party was our uh, vehement and uncompromising uh, stand against gay marriage mm -hmm. uh, and that hasn't gone away we we will we are still working I, I will promise we will roll back that legislation one day mm -hmm. so uh, the moral moral issues are a very core or who we are and uh, and of course if you are a nationalist and if you are a conservative the mainstream media just loathes you without any limitations. We so, have some experience of that, both in the United States, certainly. In exactly, well. and if, if you now figure, if you now are at least uh, even vaguely aware of the labels they use to demonize such politicians and such parties, you'll be, uh, you'll, be <laughs> you'll, you'll know that everything is in the mix. Racists, homophobes, uh, 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 we, 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 far right. We, far far right. You're exactly. not described in the media as a conservative. You're described as a far, far right, lunatic, crazy, extremist. Uh, exactly, and, and of course, and of course, uh, uh, anti-Semitic as well. That's uh, that's always in the mix as well. Mm -hmm. Although, uh, because we are uh, very, very much against mass immigration, and mass immigration to Europe nowadays mostly comes from Arab countries. We do get Islamophobic uh, uh, label as well, so it's uh, it's it's the the whole palette is there. Uh, in reality, of course, uh, I can say for myself personally and, and for the leadership of the party, we are very pro-Israel. We are and and uh, I am a, a practicing uh, a religious person. I go to church every every week basically, and uh, and and. A very significant, which is which is not entirely the norm. In not in Estonia. Estonia. No, 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 no. This is a uh, well, Estonia it comes is a Christian tradition in Estonia, but not exactly current practice. No, no, no. Estonia is one of the least religious uh, societies in the world, like most Nordic countries, anyway. So uh, it it is not a norm in Estonia. So, um, uh, so Israel. As, as part of my religious beliefs and, and as, as part of my sort of geopolitical thinking a, uh, has a very special place for me personally but also because we have because because we are a conservative party because we, we draw a, a large uh, part of our support comes from the, uh, the Christian right in Estonia which is not it is not a political uh, force like in America it's, it's a different sort of it's not politically organized, but most of those people who consider themselves to be uh, religious actually support our party. Mm -hmm. So, so the so the uh, supportive view of of, of Jewish uh, heritage and, and Jewish uh, 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 sort of religious uh, philosophy is is natural to our party. Also, um, but because the story is not considered particularly or distinctly pro-Israel. No, no, no. It's, it's not a big theme in Estonia. It's just not a big theme in Estonia. Would it be in a government that either you were in or leading? Well, uh, it would be. Uh, I mean, first of all, and I, I wanted to add, because we are nationalists, we sort of, we understand instinctively what it means to have your own special place in the world. Mm -hmm. what, what it means to have your own What's your land? What's your know, God-given right to live in a land? That's a, that's something that we instinctively understand and 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 are sympathetic to. 
So the, the, and the it, threats it, from your neighbors. It, and, and, and also, exactly, to live with a neighbor that wants to destroy you, has been wanting to do that for you know, centuries. We can relate to it. We can relate to all of it. And, and, and that, is, that is something that I think uh, it's not in the political discussion or, or it's not a real, real issue in Estonia because you know, we have our, yeah, own, yeah, we have our own, <laughs> own worries. But, but at least for me, I, I, can, I can so easily understand oh, uh, the, 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 the parallels even or, or the thinking in, in Israel. And also, just it, the, the, in the plainest, plainest uh, sort of understanding, in my view, it would be completely irrational and, and, and folly to go against God's chosen people. What's the point of it? That's, that's so, how can you be that stupid? <laughs> you want to have be, good friends. I know you're not surprised, but the rest of the world, many of countries don't, don't see it that way. Well, it's the oldest hatred in the world. I, I know it's the oldest hatred in the world. And it's right, anti-Semitism is grounding. I don't know about here, but certainly in, not in, in Estonia, Western, but Western Europe. in Western Europe. But that, that is directly tied to the immigration. That is directly tied to the immigration. I mean, of, 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 of Muslims, Islamists, basically uh, Muslim countries, yes. Yeah. Because uh, everyone is fretting about neo Nazis. There, I don't think uh, there are that many neo Nazis in the world left. Maybe somewhere in, in some basement is still is still harboring some fantasies. Basically, the, the, the anti Semitism nowadays purely comes from. Uh, from uh, uh, Islamic countries and and with these people who uh, migrate from Islamic countries to Europe the the attacks on Jews everywhere they uh, uh, they uh, become a large minority uh, will have been exploding so but uh, having said all that I, I do know that we have had a few f few uh, people in our in our part, party who have yeah, I was going to ask you. Yeah. I have said things that, uh, first of all, I don't agree with, uh, and and secondly, in my view, are just stupid and and as usually blown out of proportion. Mm -hmm. That one of one of those is uh, one of those is the uh, is the uh, what was it? a later member of our parliament, back when he was in high school, wrote a short blog post. Uh, philosophizing about the uh, economic uh, economic uh, wonder of, of Nazi Germany, mm -hmm. which was then uh, interpreted as as his admiration for for Nazi mm -hmm. Nazi uh, regime, which which wasn't so, but you, it's impossible to explain. It. <laughs> and uh, and there have been you know a few instances like this, and 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 it, it always is. Uh, seized by our political opponents and blown, made, made into our main sort of characteristics that there are actually almost these are these are so few and so small statements from people who actually are not in the in the party uh, in any significant position that you would probably find that in any organization in anywhere in the world. It's well, you're not a, you're not a stranger to controversial statements either. One of them, of course, back from 2013, almost any liberal Western publication that's doing a profile on you will cite uh, that quote, um, which uh, which was termed you know, was not, uh, racist. Not, it, didn't yes, sound, yeah. it didn't sound good. It, well, um, yes, uh, the, the statement itself is, was. Was it, of course again in a, in a context, and and back then I was not a, a member of parliament. Uh, I was uh, I was a, a talking head in a in a in a journalistic setting, a weekly show, and we were talking about mass immigration and the effect of mass immigration to the Swedish society. Uncontrolled, uh, uh, exactly, and and the, and the violence and the, and the and basically the disruption of the civil society it has brought to, to, to Swedish society. And and then I, I I said that we have to have. A very uh, strong immigration policy, which only follows one simple rule: that if it's black, send them back. So that was a that was a, a, a yeah. If I had been in a in an office in political office, I would probably have chosen different words. But 
being a journalist, you have to be a bit a pundit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You have to be. Well, that was it, it wasn't. It was. Un, I would say it was not good. But I. But I. Uh, you're. You know. You obviously. Uh, but I have to say that. Uh, I, and so I, it, it fits in the, hindsight. The, I it, might agree. It adds that. to the potential narrative that your nationalism may go too far, right? That's what you've got to convince people. That's not that. I'd have to say that uh, I have a different approach to it all. Uh, I I refuse to allow the left to decide what words I can use, what signs I can use, what concepts I can talk about. This is what the left has done in West for 30, 40, 50 years. You can't say that word. Oh, you can't say that word. Oh, you can't even think that word. No, I will choose for myself what words I will use, what concepts I will uh, in advance, and the bloody loony left will not tell me how to conduct myself. And I enjoy watching them squirming in anguish and screaming and, and gnashing their teeth. And that one though, you, I enjoy you, wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't, you wouldn't choose that again. That no, formulation, I, I mean, I'd, uh, I'd probably, I think that's what you just said, I'm not trying to put words exactly, in Exactly, but I, I'd, I'd probably use a, a different way to express, but I still am very much of the view that uh, mass immigration uh, is a very problematic uh, thing for any society. For right. any it's society. A small, uh, small country. Uh, especially for a small country who okay. has gone through mass immigration during Soviet occupation. I mean, we were before the Second World War, and 97% of Estonia was Estonian, and then when we regained our independence, 60% of Estonia was Estonian. So we had, you know, 40% uh, of the population was immigrant population. Uh, so uh, we know exactly what happens when that when that sort of societal change mm -hmm. happens. So uh, it's it's not a good thing. It's uh, it's it's it, and no one needs in Western world m mass unskilled uh, uh, immigration. That's just that's not, no in nobody's uh, uh, benefit. Well, I appreciate it very much. That you 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 addressing that. Two last questions. One. Uh, as either prime minister or somebody central in a, in a, in a future, possibly near-term government, what's your position on uh, where the Estonian embassy should be in Israel? I think it's, it's no-brainer. Uh, if, if Israel says its capital is Jerusalem, then we should have our embassy in Israel's capital. And you would move it if you I had a chance? I, I don't see what's the problem. Mm -hmm. I don't see what's the problem. Of course, it would probably bring about heavy criticism from you or, or the usual, usual suspects, but, uh, but I don't but, see But maybe problem. not the United Arab Emirates anymore, <laughs> maybe not uh, you know, Bahrain, maybe not even the Saudis. I mean, it's a, the world is changing in our part of the world. Uh, exactly, in, and, in and, and, uh, and it's not a very difficult move to make. You just uh, sell up one piece of real estate, and you and and you would probably get a very helpful uh, hand from the Israeli authorities. I suspect they would be very happy. Okay, last question is: uh, Given your security needs on the border of a very very dangerous enemy, given Israel's uh, security threats and the technology that we have in our Israeli defense ministry, uh, is there? Is there a scenario in which Estonia and Israel should be working more closely on um, buying Israeli technology or working together in some specific way? Yeah, well, I think that's been the policy in the past. No, we haven't. Uh, we have well back in the four, uh, 90s, we uh, we had an arms deal directed from okay. Israel, uh, but I think we have the same problem. Estonia and Israel have the same problem. There is no strategic depth. I mean, the country is just small. Yeah. Israel is even more stretched out than Estonia, but basically the territory, we are in the same ballpark. So you have very, very little uh, room to fall back to. Yeah. And uh, that means you have to have weapon systems that are up and running and, and are, are capable of stopping them uh, right away. Yeah. And uh, yes, Estonia has a few very critical capabilities uh, shorts, uh, uh, capabilities um, this, uh, in the short range. Yeah, we don't have uh, mid-range air defenses. 
we don't have armored ability and we are only now building up because when we were in government we pushed it through we are only now building up uh, uh, coastal defense mm -hmm. so we 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 really need uh, mid-range air defense for yesterday <laughs> just like yesterday so we can't go to your usual procurement process where it takes two years to procure and then another two years to get the stuff in here and then the next two years to train the people we need them as if we were in the war already <laughs> so uh, that means a state with state agreement an arms deal with between two governments and and as simple as that and i think there are really only very few places in the world where we can go to such a deal and one one of those places would be israel in my view fascinating I appreciate you very much taking the time to go on the record with all this from us.